Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll show you how you can self-host Mealy, <clears throat> I think that's how you say it, um, which is essentially a recipe manager um, system that you can essentially input your own recipes into, or you can actually import recipes from websites in there so that you can just kind of have a collection of all your recipes that you ever use or want to use, or just create some random stuff and see, you know, what sticks. Hopefully, whatever you do create, you know, actually works out and, you know, tastes well um, if it doesn't hopefully you have some kids that you know <clears throat> like to explore and be adventurous with their food um, if they don't well <sighs> there's always restaurants guys um, but anywho we're gonna have some fun and I'll show you how you can self host this and import some recipes so let's get started all right so First off here, we will do our like pre-setup of everything that we'll need. So um, we'll set up the DNS in here real quick. So we'll just edit our DNS entry. Hosted zone here. Uh, we'll make sure we update the serial number. And then we will create a entry for it. So melee in a... Ooh. And then we're gonna use 86 as the next number here. So that should be pretty simple. And Mealy. All right, so that should update our DNS, do all the fancy stuff. Then what we'll need to do here is add into our Ansible Playbooks inventory file in here. We'll edit this real quick also. Um, and just add Mealy in here so that we can make sure that we can create the server. Um, so we'll go add Mealy. Um, this should uh, go out and update um, in, in the pipeline here. Um, it will update and run and deploy out to our AWX. So it run through, ran all the updates, validated, deployed it. So we can go to um, our AWX instance here and a login and we can actually check that it updated by going to our inventory um, and we should now have the host for this give me one second doesn't seem like it updated GitLab this project updated last modified Oh, did it not actually deploy? Give it one second. Yeah, so it should have deployed. Created, when was this last successful job? Jobs. All right, so successfully, okay, so they actually did deploy out. So, we should be able to see it in here. Host. Yeah. All right. So what we can do is run through. We will create the new VM. We'll patch it, install Docker, create the uh, SSL cert for it, and set up Nginx. If you are curious how this whole pipeline process work for this workflow, um, feel free to check out my automation series playlist. Um, and I kind of go through and separate videos of how I incorporate each one of these and make it work. Um, so obviously we'll make the host name Mealy. We'll use the address of the 86 that we did. Um, and the VM name we'll just set up to be Dragon Mealy. Now the proxy address, this, this one we'll have to actually look at um, installation docker we'll have to actually look at their installation so we're gonna go with the sql like docker compose because this will be probably the easiest way to set up if you just want like a one thing install um otherwise you could do like you know a postgres one also um but this this is pretty simple so we're gonna just try to keep it simple so it looks like we'll use port 9925 is what we'll do here so we'll copy that and we'll do http localhost 9925 and we'll just add upload headers that's totally fine no biggie so we'll hit next and uh, launch so this will go through this process take a few minutes as i said it'll create the vm on our vcenter instance patch it install docker and docker compose create the certificate from our step ca server deploy it out to the server and set up the uh, proxy pass for 
um, our stuff. So we'll let this run. Um, once it's finished running, we'll get the last few things configured and show you how you can get started. All right, so now that it is finished installing, what we can do is open up a terminal. We can log in and we will um, melee dot dragon dot local. We can SSH to it and log in. <clears throat> so we can see it's just kind of your normal thing, but um, it should have Docker installed, Docker compose also, um, and everything else. So, oh, so we can see that those are installed. So what we can do is we'll go back to our um, configuration file. We'll create this Docker file, copy, and we will create a Docker compose, uh, Docker hyphen compose dot YAML, and we'll paste what we have in here from what we copied. Um, the few things that we will change, obviously, is we are going to change it so that it is this. We will use HTTPS. Um, I don't live here. We're going to do America Chicago for the time zone. Um, but the rest you can more or less kind of just keep as default unless you're planning, you have, you know, memory constraints on your machine, or you want to change whether the data lives in different volume, um, or the ports. But for the most part, you can keep everything else as the same. So we'll save that. Um, and then we can do a Docker compose up and a detach. So this will pull the melee container, um, download it, do all the configurations. And then once it's done, we should be able to check it out and show you what it can do. All right, so we can see that it has started here um, and running on 9925.29000. Um, we should be able to see actually in our Etsy Nginx, nginx.conf that we have the proxy pass set up correctly here. So what we should be able to do now is go to a browser, type in HTTPS melee.dragon.local and we get the login screen for this. So what we can do is register uh, and we'll just create a new group and we'll name it dragon in this specific case. Um, <clears throat> boop, boop. You could do with C data and, and feed it all. I'm just gonna keep it as everything default. So what we'll do is create a username dragon.local. Um, you could also do, you know, enable advanced content and stuff like that, but we'll just leave everything off. So no, no submit and we are set. So now we should be able to log in with our user. And this is kind of just the base. Nothing is important. Nothing's there. You pretty much get your base thing. So you can see that there's nothing on your search. There is a meal planner where you can plan your meals for the week um, as, as well as other things. So you can create a shopping list. Um, but the fun things that you guys are wanting to uh, do is obviously, well, I'll show you that how you can actually import a recipe by URL. Um, otherwise, if you have like, you know, your manual recipes, you can import it manually. Um, but you can actually just import it by URL and it will try to just scrape the site. So say for example, we want like orange chicken recipe. Um, and let's just go with the first one and copy this link. We can just paste the link and we can just create it. So this will actually usually just pull off from the website. Um, uh, and you can see how it will separate what it is, the ingredients and give you the step-by-step -step instructions. Um, it's not perfect. <laughs> As you can see, it says to make orange sauce. So there might be some, you know, things that are kind of missing. Um, but for the most part, you can probably fill in or um, get get everything, uh, you know, you can fix it, obviously. So you can see, you know, start with this. You could obviously copy and paste and edit this in here if you wanted to. Oh, I need to put it in edit mode. Um, well, you can actually edit the recipes and whatnot. So you can fix the stuff. So it's not perfect. I um, mean, it might depend on the website, how it's scraping, but you can kind of get the gist and kind of import, you know, the majority of the stuff without needing to um, edit, you know, start from scratch. Um, but for the most part, if you're just looking for something simple that can get you, you know, most of the way there, um, you can obviously rate it. You can love it. 
um, and have fun, honestly. So um, if you like cooking and you just want to kind of grab some recipes, save it locally so that you don't need to, you know, go to the internet to find them every single time um, and save them all in one place, this is a great way to self-host. Or if you just have specific recipes that, you know, you want to keep in the family and share with your um, kids, this is also a good way too. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and go get some orange chicken. I don't know. I just, I thought I'd change it up a little bit, guys. Um, but no, really, have some fun. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.